My name is Felicity Aston and I'm a polar scientist and an explorer. And uh, although those two occupations are fairly niche, what I've found over the space of that career is that the experiences that I've had have resonance uh, across a really wide audience of people. So I've spent much of my career also sharing those lessons and experiences uh, with, with others. So my latest book gave me an opportunity to look at about 15 really famous explorers, but to look at their life and experiences through the lens of one particular characteristic that is of use to all of us. So be that courage or leadership or resilience. And uh, what I found through the process of writing this book is that there is so much that we don't know about these stories. So it was really fun to be able to get under the skin of uh, those characters that we know so well and to dig out the real nitty gritty of their lives. I didn't have one favourite explorer, but there was, of course, given my polar background, a draw towards the polar explorers amongst the amongst the group, in particular, Ernest Shackleton and uh, Roald Amundsen. And these are both uh, people who have become famous for being exemplars of leadership in the case of Ernest Shackleton and uh, adaptability in, in the case of Roald Amundsen. And yet what I found in the course of writing about them was that they themselves were wracked with things like self-doubt and indecision and often considered themselves to be failures and I found that really interesting to um uh, really reassuring really that you know even these giants of exploration were plagued with the same problems that I've experienced and many others have too. Exploration has a lot of really easily understood metaphor that can be applied to business. You know, you come together as a team to overcome adversity and achieve a common goal. Uh, but then on a real sort of practical level, I think very literally, Literally, there's a lot of crossover as well. Um, you take teams into really tough environments uh, where there's high pressure, high stakes, where high performance is absolutely a requisite. Um, and often you're going into the unknown. You're having to deal with uncertainty as well as adversity and uh, and all of those skills, resilience and the courage to, to do that. Um, that's uh, all really uh, a strong transfer from uh, exploration to, to business. More and more frequently, we're hearing the term explorer's mindset when it comes to business. And I think what's meant by that is that our idea of exploration is one of being pioneering, one of uh, having courage to go into unknown ground, uh, but also of ingenuity, of thinking differently, of not being afraid to make your own path. And uh, we've seen that that philosophy, that mindset is something that has often led to success in business as just as it has success in exploration and uh, and so I think it's really interesting to see what can be learnt from one and place it in the other. I wouldn't call myself a mental health advocate, but what I do do is I talk very honestly and openly about the psychological journey that has gone alongside a lot of my expeditions and with life lessons of, of explorers it's the psychology of their journeys and their achievements that is often more interesting than the physical journey itself and I find that fascinating and so I've long been interested in the psychology of taking human beings into extreme environments when they're really under pressure 
And, uh, you know, it's, it's really incredible what you find out about people. But what I think is really important is that more often I've been totally inspired by what I've seen rather than disappointed. And I think that's really important to remember just how brilliant human beings are. Back in 2011, 2012, I made a, a journey by myself right the way across the Antarctic landmass. And so I'm often asked to recount my experiences do that, during that journey, um, particularly how I dealt with isolation and loneliness. And that has become so relevant, obviously, over the last 18 months or so. Um, and what I've really found is that you have to highlight the advantages of that situation. For example, you know, I learned more about teams and team expeditions through going on my own than I would have done in a whole lifetime of um, just going out as part of a group. And so I think that the lessons that we've learned through that isolation um, are really important to remember and, uh, and to put into action now that we're moving into another phase. I'm currently preparing for my next North Pole ski expedition, which is due to take place in April 2022. Uh, it's called the Big North Pole Expedition, with big standing for before it's gone, because the focus of this expedition will be to collect as much data about the sea ice up at high latitudes of the Arctic Ocean as we possibly can, before we lose the opportunity to get out on skis on that particular part of the planet uh, due to really rapid environmental change.